Welcome back to another day in Yangon. It is day two of the Thadingyut Festival. And if I have my facts straight, today is the actual full moon. So today is the uh, center of the festival. It's quite a bit earlier than my previous visit. Since it is the Festival of Lights, I went to the festival uh, later last night, you know, so it'd be dark and you could see all the lights. But today I thought I'd uh, venture out when it's still a little bit light. It's about uh, five o'clock right now. And I just wanted to be able to see things more clearly and perhaps see some of the food more clearly because today is the return of the five snack challenge. I honestly have no idea what five snacks I'll end up trying, but I remember from my visit last night that there were some interesting food carts with snacks in like silver goblets, like metal goblets. And I had no idea what they were making in them. One of them seemed like yogurt or tea or something. Um, the other one, I have no idea. So I'm going to keep my eye open for these uh, metal goblets and see if I can uh, order whatever it is they're preparing. No clue what any of it is. And I don't think any of these guys are, will be able to speak English. So even after I order it and eat it or drink it or do whatever you're supposed to do with it, I still won't know what it is. But it should be interesting nonetheless. Getting close to the street now. Uh, it's much less crowded than it was uh, late last night. And uh, for me, that's a good thing right now. I don't think I could handle such a, loud, such a large crowd again. It's a totally different scene this early. A lot of the food stalls aren't set up yet. And from the food stalls that I've seen, I would actually need a lot of help and a lot of explanation because I walk by and I look at what they have on display and I honestly have not only no idea what it is, I don't even have any idea what to do with it. Like, how would you eat it? I'll show you what I'm talking about later. But there are these um, food stalls with these giant blobs of goo covered in nuts. And then they have these round um, cylinders of some kind. And I'm not really sure even what they're selling. Like, what do you point at and say, I'll have some of that. And then when you do, what do they cut off and what do they give you and how do you eat it? <laughs> I have no clue at all. But then again, that's what the uh, five snack challenge is all about, to force me to find out some of these things. But I passed by this one that seems to have some food that I can understand. And I think I'm gonna start with something like this. So here's a snack. And it looks like it, maybe there's two different snacks. I'm not sure, we've got one like this and one like that. And this one is one 500. And this one, two for 500. Okay. Um, I'll have one of those and two of those. Yeah, one and two. So I'm going to get uh, one of these and two of these, I guess. Okay. Oh, it looks like, yeah. So she sprinkled some sugar inside and folded those up. And then I guess I'm going to get one of these and we'll find out what that, yeah, 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 there's one. Cool. Thank you. So for this snack here, it looks like they put in this uh, liquid there. And they have eggs over here. Okay, oh, that, the eggs for making that one. And this. Coconut. Oh, coconut. Ah, coconut. Great, thank you. So she was telling me that this has um, coconut in it. So one of the snacks has coconut, and that one over there is some kind of uh, egg mixture. All right, thank you. Oh. 
This isn't the uh, cleanest place to be sitting to try my snack, but it was the first spot I came across. So as I said, even though I managed to order this snack and pay for it, I uh, honestly don't know what they are. But they're fresh off the griddle, nice and hot. Kind of like pancakes, I guess. Ha, ah, very hot. So this is the one with kind of a uh, coconut filling. Hmm. Ow, ow, ow. It's even hot on my leg. Mmm. Mmm. Very good. And not very challenging either because it's basically pancake with a coconut cream and a little bit of uh, sugar sprinkled on top. Mmm. but hot, <laughs> hot on the fingers. Mm, that was very good. Very good choice for my first uh, snack. And I love the way the woman was willing to work with me, like through the language barrier. A lot of places where I go, you show up and you obviously want to buy something, but they kind of act like they have no idea why you're there, which makes it so much more difficult. But she knew, of course, since I'm standing there looking at her food, I want to buy her food and I need to know how much it costs. So she pointed to this one, said one and then five. So one for 500. And she pointed to these ones and said two for 500. You know, she didn't actually have to say anything. She just did it with her fingers and I figured it out right away. I appreciate that when someone helps me uh, figure out how to buy things and how to pay for them. Mm. <clears throat> mm. So good. I'm cheating a little bit with my five snack challenge because I didn't have any lunch at all and I didn't have any dinner so I'm actually really hungry. Mm. Let's try this next one. Mm. It's much heavier, more dense. I have no idea what's in the middle. I never saw this one being prepared. very much an egg flavor. So I think it's basically like a, uh, it's like an omelet really, an egg omelet, um, all fluffy. I don't know how they made it though. An egg heavy pancake. Wow. Mm. Very good. I don't know whether that was one snack or two. I think I'll just call it one snack. It's kind of a similar sort of thing, you know, one with coconut, one without, but it's all basically kind of a pancake, a pancake or a crepe, really. First one was like a crepe folded over and the other one was like a really thick uh, pancake. Let's go find snack number two. So I'm standing near two other stalls that Kind of confuse me like there's this one here and this is the one where they have these i've seen uh, quite a few tables like this where they have these large blobs there some kind of um, gelatinous substance with nuts on top but then they also have these cylindrical items there and i'm not sure if they're the same thing because they do have these um, round uh, cylinders here. And maybe this goes in here 
gets cooked and then cut up into pieces like that over there. I'm not sure. I've been waiting for someone to come buy one so that I know exactly what's going on here, but so far nobody has uh, bought one. Excuse me. Yes. Do you speak English? Yes, sir. Can you help me understand what this food is here? I want to order that, but I don't know what it is. Uh, actually, this one is the traditional Nima food, and then this one is, uh, we call it the sticky rice. Sticky rice. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you want to try? Yeah, I would. Is this the same as this? No, this one is a different one. Okay. Yeah. So what is this here? Uh, actually, they include the peanut, and this one also the sticky rice. It's sticky rice. Yeah. Also, okay. But uh, the taste is different. Okay. So, and then here, the, you see the, the white color and the, the black color. And right. then this one also the sticky rice, but different. In life with a GoPro, the GoPro battery dies at exactly the wrong time every time. You know, I go through four batteries in a day. So that means four times I'm in the middle of doing something when the battery dies and I lose, you know, the moment, whatever it is. So that's one uh, negative side to uh, vlogging with a GoPro. But anyway, I asked a man who was walking by if he could help me translate to find out what this food was. And I ended up buying one of each of these uh, cylinders. And he explained to me that everything they make here is uh, made with sticky rice. So the big blobs there on the tray, that's sticky rice. And when you buy that, you get it in a bag and you eat it with your hands. And then the other sticky rice, they take that sticky rice, put it in these um, cylinders, and then they uh, roast it in a fire, and then they cut it up into pieces like this. And I'm not sure what the difference is in flavor between these two, but it was uh, 500 chat for the two of them. So I'm about to try some uh, sticky rice. Okay, time to try my uh, sticky rice. Oh, I forgot to mention that the man who translated for me and told me all about the food, he insisted on treating me as well. So uh, he paid for this latest snack. They're heavy though. <laughs> two of these might have been uh, too much. Maybe just one of them would have been better. Wow, that is thick and heavy. Oh, let's uh, see if the GoPro can get a good look at it close up. And they put uh, coconut and sugar on top. Hmm. It's not too scary. It, um, Tastes like lightly flavored uh, sticky rice. Hmm. Most of the flavor, in fact, is coming from the coconut and the sugar on top. The rice itself tastes like rice, you know, sticky rice. I'm not sure about the outer shell that's holding it all together. I was wondering whether you're supposed to eat it, but you really don't have a choice. Kind of baked into the rice. It's more like kind of a meal, this, you know, it's like a filling solid rice cake, sticky rice cake. Next uh, sticky rice cake, white rice this time. That's what it uh, looks like. Very solid, very heavy in my hand. And the same uh, coconut and sugar on top. <laughs> As always, I'm really struggling to find a place to sort of sit down and enjoy these things because I guess here you're meant to buy it and then walk around as you eat it. Um, <laughs> I'm crouching down here in front of someone's house in their driveway, essentially. Mm. Mm. This one has a very different texture. The red one had more of a rice texture, like you could still chew on like grains of individual rice. This one seems to have been ground into a flour and made into a paste. So it's much more of a solid um, cake-like substance. 
not a bad snack number two. I'll finish this and then on to uh, snack number three. I'm struggling a little bit with snack number three. Every time I see something, I'm bombarded by one of these commercial stalls with the loud, loud speakers. So I was, it was impossible to communicate with the people selling the food. I have to find a slightly quieter spot. Uh, this looks interesting. Something also a little bit deep fried. I guess this is where they are uh, preparing them. And the young woman told me what they're called, but I, I don't know the name really. Oh, it looks like they're all kind of similar dishes with uh, the same ingredients, but prepared differently. You've got the small ones here. And then here she's frying like bigger pancakes. And then they fold them over here. And then they have a thicker batter version here. And the go-to price seems to be 500 chat for a lot of things. Here, I could get 10 of them for 500 chat. Oh, this is kind of crazy. <clears throat> I had to come down one of these alleyways, like almost a full kilometer, just to get away from that screaming noise coming out of those loudspeakers. Again, from those uh, commercial sites selling products and things. Anyway, I still have my uh, snack number three. Ten of these little um, spaceships, little doughy spaceships. And I think they have maybe chickpeas inside. Um, who knows what's all in here. Mmm. Smells good. Yeah, crispy deep fried exterior and the interior is still kind of soft and gooey. Mm. I don't really know um, what's inside them. They're good though. Wow. <laughs> Hello. Mm. I'm sort of standing in someone's uh, front yard where they park their cars just because um, it's the only place I could go, like kind of get off the street and, and away from the noise there. Yeah, my tolerance for noise is nowhere near that of local people in most uh, Asian countries. I, I just can't handle that much, uh, that much noise concentrated <laughs> in one place. I had to get away for a few minutes to enjoy my uh, snack number three. These definitely fall into the category of um, wood order again, you know? You're sitting at home, watching a good movie, someone comes to the door and hands you a bag of these, you'll be very happy. You just pop the whole things in your mouth. Hmm. Very good. I don't know that I need um, 10 of them at this precise moment. I've had five so far. Let's go for number six. Then we'll put four of them away for uh, later. Mm. <laughs> These are good. One more, one more. The sticky rice cylinders. I mean, I'd order them again if I were hungry, but there's nothing in the flavor that made me think, oh, I gotta have some more of those. You know, they were just um, food, you know, eating sticky rice. But this has a, a snack kind of flavor. Hmm. One more. Looks like I'm gonna eat all 10 of them. I just, I just happened to have a couple of extra, you know, wet wipes in my uh, knapsack. And these are turning out to be uh, quite handy 
for the five snack challenge, you know. You had very um, sticky fingers. Hmm. So now I'm thinking snack number four should be a drink of some kind. Could use a drink. Like maybe I could just sit down there and have a beer, you know? All the tables are empty right now. Maybe I could just sit down and have a cold drink at one of the tables. I think I'm going to abandon that idea about sitting down and having a drink. It's just way too loud. I would go crazy after five minutes sitting there. But I passed a table here with some kind of a roasted meat on display. Maybe that will be uh, snack number four. Let's go see if I can order any. Pardon me? 700. 700 for? Three piece, 2,000. Three piece, 2,000? Okay, I'll have a three piece. Sure, okay. Try some sauce. All right, so we got three pieces for 2,000. So I got some uh, strips of some kind of a uh, grilled beef or grilled meat of some kind. Cost uh, three three strips for two thousand chat. I asked her what they are, and she just said that they were Thailand. So I don't know whether it's pork or chicken or what it could be. I guess I'll find out in a minute. But whatever it is, she called it uh, Thailand. Let's give it a try. I've got snack number three here, my uh, Thailand, she called it. I had to run away from the main street again and come down one of these uh, laneways. I'm like a squirrel with a nut. You know, I grab my nut and I just gotta run up to the nearest tree to eat it and, and protect it or something. But yeah, I, I, couldn't, uh, <laughs> I couldn't find a square foot of a space back there to sort of stand and enjoy my snack for a minute. Hmm. I'm guessing pork. It's like a sweet sausage of some kind. <clears throat> sweet, but it's also kind of spicy because of that sauce that, that they um, poured onto it. Hmm. It's good. It's good. As I said, it was a uh, <clears throat> 700 chat each. And then if you get three of them, it's 2,000 uh, chat, which is like a uh, dollar 33 US for these uh, three pieces. Mm -hmm. This is very good. I don't know what to call it. She called it Thailand, so I will call it Thailand. I'm enjoying my uh, Thailand sausage on a stick. Back into the fray for snack number five. And I think I know what it's going to be. As I was fighting my way out with my Thailand uh, sausage, I passed by this interesting display. Again, it's something that they're kind of frying over uh, hot coals but I hadn't seen anything quite like it anywhere else in the market. It was a, yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. If I can make my way through the crowd I'll, and, and find this place again, maybe that's what I'll have for my uh, fifth snack of the Festival of Lights. In honor of the uh, Buddha coming down from heaven back to earth. There's the Ferris wheel again, human powered. Funny, while I was sitting underneath one of these houses having a snack, a young girl called down to me from her balcony. I didn't, I didn't know where the sound was coming from for the longest time, but then I looked up and I saw her up there and she shouted down in very good English, you know, what is your YouTube name? You know, what is your YouTube channel name? She knew exactly what I was doing. So 
Okay. So I found the uh, snack place here. Oh. You see, they've got some uh, roaring fires going on here. Very, very hot coals. And whatever this is, they're cooking it on top of a cloth here in the steam. Oh yeah, and then they put a lid on top. Okay, so she's making one over there. Flour, some kind of a uh, filling, more flour. And that's it. And it goes on, uh, on there to be cooked, and I guess that's where it gets its moisture from. Oh, oh they have one with peanuts, and then one over there. And what what do you call it? What is the name? Bobal. Bobal? Yes. Something like that. Thank you. <laughs> Snack number five. She called them something like bobal, something like that. Uh, again, I have no idea what they are. And uh, uh, how in the world am I going to get out of here? I'm jammed in from all directions. This looks like the shortest way out. This looks interesting too. Wow. Slowly getting better and quieter. Funny thing is, while I was getting this Bhopal, or whatever it is, I was so intent on uh, talking with the woman and, and watching the uh, preparations. I didn't just realize it until long into what I was going on that I was like leaning right over these hot coal urns, you know? It was like right there. I was nearly uh, burning myself to death while I was trying to buy the snack. I'm really not paying enough attention these days. Whew. This isn't the greatest place in the world to stop, but I see a fence where I can... Uh, Clip my GoPro, maybe. There we go. <laughs> GoPro is firmly clipped to this box going around a giant electrical transformer. Definitely not the safest. Oh boy, how do I eat this now? Whoa, it's all so hot. And all four of them in this bag together, it kind of turned into um, mush. <laughs> ah, well, I get it out piece by piece. Hmm. Well, that is a different flavor. I thought it would be something unique, and it really is. Um, what is it? I don't know what I'm tasting. A little bit of peanut, because it has peanuts on top. But other than that, yeah, it's got an odd kind of flavor. Oh, not very fond of it though. Something really strange about it. Yeah, you know, the flower is a type of flower I'm not used to. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it almost tastes like it's not cooked. You know, like the flour, whatever this is, is still raw or something. And they definitely didn't cook it for very long. Whatever they made, they just put it on top of that um, clay or the pot, the coal fire with steam, you know, pouring out of it. And then the steam is what uh, cooks it. But it doesn't cook for very long. 
That's two of them. I'm gonna save the other two uh, for later, I think. Not my favorite snack of the evening. Getting up some pretty good speed on that thing. Funny how they're all turning into it as if they really are control. Oh my god. <laughs> Look how fast they're going. They really have to lean to the inside to keep from being thrown off. I think it's time for the bonus snack. This is what I was looking for, the uh, silver the silver cups. Is that what that is? Is it like a, is it like ice cream? Uh, yes, uh, ice cream. Ice cream. Kind of like ice cream. Okay. How much is it for one? Uh, one five hundred. Five hundred. Okay. Okay. I'll try one. Uh, which flavor do you like to prefer? What? Strawberry or mint or taro? Chocolate. Taro chocolate. Maybe strawberry. Yes, yes. Okay, strawberry. There it is there, kind of a strawberry ice cream, something like that. And then, so he takes them out. Look at that. Good. So let's uh, see what it tastes like. Tastes like strawberry. That's what I ordered. Very good. I need an alleyway fast. There's one over here. Oh. Mm. Mm. This is very good. It really it tastes kind of like a like a popsicle that you would get from a convenience store. Mm. So I think with uh, this being uh, snack number six, I'm going to head out of this part of the festival and uh, head for some quieter parts of the city. I think. Mm. Not far away from here is a Botatong Pagoda and there might be like a light display there and it might be quite a bit quieter and more relaxed than uh, this district. So I'm going to walk for a few blocks towards the river to a uh, Botatong Pagoda and just sort of uh, take a look, see if anything is going on down there. Mm. Mm. Time to uh, put the GoPro away and enjoy my snack number six. I'm walking down Botatong Pagoda Road now, and I think I'm getting close to the river. I think I'm starting to see the lights of the pagoda up ahead of me. I visited Botatong Pagoda on my last uh, trip to Yangon, and the name Botatong means something like 1,000 generals or 1,000 soldiers because when the hairs of the Buddha were brought here as a sacred relic, they were escorted or met with an honor guard of a thousand soldiers or a thousand generals. And that's where the name came from. During World War II, this uh, pagoda was hit accidentally by a bomb and uh, destroyed. And then the main uh, stupa was rebuilt and the new stupa was uh, rebuilt with a hollow interior 
and you can go inside the stupa and walk through kind of a maze of gold colored hallways with a lot of uh, beautiful relics inside. It's almost like a mini museum inside the uh, pagoda stupa and I believe that makes it unique. Um, I've never heard of a stupa at a pagoda uh, like that one. Oh, just reached the uh, main intersection with uh, both the Thong Pagoda on the other side. Very beautiful, all lit up for the Festival of Lights. Oh, there it is over there. And I think to get across, uh, I get to use the uh, pedestrian bridge over there. And there's even a working escalator. Love those. <laughs> of all places to find a working uh, escalator and it looks like it's uh, very busy down in there just like where i was i'm not sure i have the energy to go inside there we'll see once i get across i would like to walk down to the river on the other side though and uh, see what's going on over there i'm not sure i'm willing to face the crowds in there it's the small things in life isn't it of all things to be amazed by i'm amazed by this uh, escalator what is it doing here and how do they uh, how do they keep it running in this outdoor environment in this climate They're rising above boltadong pagoda This is uh, worth the walk down here, just to see that. And a lot of other people having the same idea. It's actually not that bad down here. It's less crowded, a lot less crowded than up where I was. There's a lot of people here, but not nearly as uh, jammed. There's the entrance to the uh, pagoda. Even now, though, I think they would charge the foreigner fee to go in. I forget what it is here. 10,000 uh, chat, just like Schwedegon, or less, I'm not really sure. There's the foreigner's admission fee over there. Since I've already been inside, I think I'll just walk around the outside, head down to the river over here. That's pretty funny. They even have uh, carnival games here. They just shoot things down with little guns. Look at them. Look at these guys. They've got a bow and arrow. Oh, he missed. Let's see if he gets another shot. The sharpshooter trying again. Oh. Two shots that he didn't make it. I'm not sure what he would win though. Not even sure what he was knocking down. I didn't take a close look. Cans of condensed milk or something? I'm not sure. Fireworks and uh, firecrackers are also a part of this uh, festival. I haven't seen too much of that so far, but I'm seeing some fireworks down by the river here. Just a little sprinkling of it. Mm. 
and there's the scene inside the pagoda. sure if all those dishes are they like oil filled containers and they'll light them like candles yeah I think so you can see some young boys in the middle there pouring oil into them so at some point they're probably gonna light them all I forgot about the full moon until just now just looking out over the river Probably can't see it very clearly on the wide angle of the GoPro. There's the full moon up in the sky. Very bright, very full tonight, of course. The boats ferrying people back and forth across the river, still active. Got little flashing lights on them. I didn't expect that. I came walking down here in the daytime on my last visit to Yangon just to look at the boats and see the river. And tonight a lot of other people had the same idea during the festival. Yeah, it's a nice quiet place to come away from the hustle and bustle, shoot off some fireworks. Still got to walk where watch where you're uh, putting your feet though. Looks like they've opened up more of the gates into Botatong, or this could be only an exit. When I came here before, all these other gates were closed. Only the main gate was open. Yeah, looks like it's only an exit. back up here on the pedestrian overpass with the Botatong Pagoda in the background. Heading back to my guest house now. Hi. Can I use a camera? Sure. And I think this is a good time to end the video and wish everyone, wherever you are, a happy Thading Yot Festival. One side effect of the uh, Festival of Lights is that I'm, as I'm enjoying all of my snacks up here, mosquitoes have been enjoying snacks down around my ankles and oh, they've been eating me alive. My feet are on fire right now. <laughs> I didn't think of that. I should have put on some uh, mosquito repellent before I came out here.